pleasant good morning to each and every one of you that have tuned in this morning to another uh, Pastor Connor program. Uh, this morning we are having a wonderful time with the Lord and we pray even as you join us today that you will be tremendously blessed. At this moment before we go into our program we just want to acknowledge the presence of the Lord with us. So we ask right where you are to just bow your heads as we pray. Father in heaven, today we are grateful for life. We are grateful for the opportunity whereby we can come together as your people to discuss your word and to get relevant information and principle that would be able to make our lives better. We pray for the direction of the Holy Spirit uh, for all the persons that are present this morning on this platform and we pray for the panelists and even as we discuss that your name will be glorified. We thank you for being with us and we thank you for the life that will be transformed as a result of the word that will be preached this morning in Jesus' name. Once again, we thank you so much again for you tuning in uh, to our Pastoral Corner discussion or program this morning. We just want to take this moment to continue to encourage you uh, to view uh, the series that is taking place at this moment footprints of hope evangelistic series with pastor samuel we want to encourage you to share and like the page you know encourage your family and friend to tune in night after night today we are looking at a wonderful topic i don't know about you but i'm very excited because we are living in a society where many people are constantly making excuses and so today we are looking at the topic excuses and we have with us to discuss this amazing topic, uh, my dear friend and colleagues, uh, Pastor Gordon and Pastor Enoch Isaac, that will help uh, you know, discuss this topic and bring clarity and wisdom in the topic. This morning, gentlemen, gentlemen, it is a pleasure to be here, and I'm happy to see each one of you. I just want us to quickly go in to our discussion and ask this question, what are excuses? Are there any valid excuses? And uh, any of you can answer the question this morning. Well, I would say that an excuse is a rational, a reason given as to why something was done or why something was not done in its simplest form. That's what I would say. And um, in its more, um, at a deeper level, I would say an excuse can be a statement of avoidance of responsibility and accountability. Wonderful. Pastor Eno, do you have anything to add to that? <laughs> <laughs> Very profound. <laughs> of, of course, of course. Um, um, because I'm on the program, I will say something, but of course, <laughs> <laughs> the answer that Pastor Gordon gave is, is quite complete in its, you know, in, in, its, um, in its very nature. An excuse, a statement, you know, we, that, that, is normally given, as Pastor Gordon said, when, when something is, is, is done or not done, you know? And um, very often, though, what happens sometimes is that it is used to either deflect the blame or to avoid responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I say very often. That, that doesn't mean that every time it, it is. But, um, and that happens all the time, you know? If, sure. you, if you think about it, if you think sure. about it, <laughs> We probably make excuses that not we're not even aware that we actually are making excuses, <laughs> you know. So it's it's a, it's a way of life, really. Um, but I'm saying sometimes to the extreme, it is really given, um, where we try to deflect, or avoid, you know, taking responsibility, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or, or mm -hmm. avoiding blame or, or something of that nature. <laughs> wow, wow, very powerful. I even as I listen to the the answers for the question, I am tempted to ask: Is it a dangerous thing to make excuses? say it's dangerous to make excuses when your excuses are, are, are foolish <laughs> because they could get you into more trouble. The more you try to evade responsibility, just responsibility, it just ties you up even more. So it's dangerous in the sense that it could get you in more trouble. Wow. So I hope our online viewers are listening to the various answers that have been given, especially in relation to the definition of excuse or excuses. And online viewers, you can also, you know, join in and share your, your, your answers with us today as we look at the topic excuses. I, I want to quickly move on to ask this question to my panelists. 
Are there valid excuses for not surrendering his or her life to Jesus? Are there valid excuses for one not surrendering his life or her life to Jesus? And then in answering your question, I would like for you to give some biblical references to our audience this morning. I guess before we go to the Jesus part, mm -hmm. we should, uh, let's ask, let's say, are there valid excuses? Before we get to the valid about giving your life to Jesus, mm -hmm. but can an excuse in and of itself be valid? Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I think if you had absolutely no control over the circumstances, Let's say you arrive late at a wedding because the police were on the road, there was a traffic accident, there was a buildup of traffic, or um, you're flying and you had to get to the airport on time, but there was, a, there was an issue with the plane or whatever. There are some situations over which you have no control that um, unavoidably delayed you or uh, affected you or impacted your schedule. In those circumstances, we can say the excuse is probably valid. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, I, <laughs> I, would, I would also um, agree that there are valid excuses that one makes. Um, and that is not trying to defect, deflect blame mm -hmm. or avoid responsibility. Um, you know, this morning on my way to here, there's a long traffic delay over at Wester Hall. Um, because we were so far behind, I, I wasn't quite sure what was the issue. I mean, long. Um, folks were coming out of the vehicles and carrying on. I, I wanted, at one time, I wanted to turn around and, and go back to St. Paul's area. And, you know, I, I calculated if I do that, it would take me a long time because <laughs> I wasn't quite sure what was happening at the front. So we just stood there and, <coughs> and waited for, you know, quite some time. And then when we got there, we realized that the traffic, when the traffic started moving, it was really uh, moving in the opposite direction first. And then we started moving. Um, but I was ahead of time, so I still didn't, you know, I still got here. But I'm saying, here was a long traffic delay this morning. Mm -hmm. And suppose mm -hmm. I heard one um, um, driver behind me saying, Pastor, I'm late. <laughs> well, I wasn't that so late, so I, you know, it yeah, didn't yeah, affect yeah. me. But sometimes those circumstances occur. Definitely. You have no control over yeah, it. Circumstances. Um, and yeah, you tell someone, yeah, I told you I was going to meet being Granville for 10, but I'm sorry, I can't be there. That's an excuse. I can't be there. Because here, uh, I, there's an accident I'm in, I'm in traffic. And it was an accident. It was a major accident, but it was an accident. And you're stuck. You, uh, so you, when you call, you say, I can't be there. And that's an excuse. You're not trying to deflect blame or avoid responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's just that there's a genuine situation. Um, that is different from knowing what you have to do. And don't um, do it. Don't, do it, don't take in measures before. Mm -hmm. And then calling in or sending a message to, you know, you know, you're deflecting blame. You, you're trying to avoid. So there are valid excuses and there are good reasons sometimes, <laughs> you know, for making them. Wonderful, wonderful. So the, the essence or the operative word is there are situations or there are various challenges that would prevent you from carrying out the responsibility that you should carry out. So thank you so much, Pastor Gordon, for just adding in this little question there. You know, to make our discussion more livelier and more this uh, wonderful. And uh, so, let us go to the question that was asked previously: um, Are there valid excuses for one not surrendering? We want to go into the the spiritual aspect. Are there valid excuses for one not surrendering his or her life to Jesus Christ? And and my response would be: I would say I do not know that there is there is to be any valid excuse for not surrendering your life to Jesus. Because um, you, you, you did ask, Pastor, for biblical support. And mm -hmm. I'm saying the Word of God says in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, just paraphrasing that um, today, if you should, verse 8, today, if you should hear his voice, harden not your heart. Meaning, whenever the Word of God comes to you, once it, it is revealed to you, you should accept it. Definitely. Um, there may be reasons why you can't get baptized at the same time. For, you know, um, it, may be, it may be, you may be on the, on the ship, on the sea, and the word of God came to you, and yeah, there's water, but you can't baptize in the ocean. I mean, I'm just using that. So, but the, the, the word of God comes to you on a plane, you know, flying 14 hours, you know, across the Atlantic. 
and you accept Christ there and you can't get baptized and you know but 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 there should be no reason when the word of God comes to you and understand it, you reject it. There may be reasons why you can't get baptized that time, that day, that hour. Mm -hmm. But as it relates to accepting Christ, the, the Bible says, today, if you shall hear his voice. So once we start making excuses relative to that, I think that's a problem. So I don't think, my answer is, I don't think there's any valid excuse for not accepting Christ. That's it. Powerful. You know, you know I'm not sure what Pastor, Pastor God Pastor may God, want to add. I don't know if you want to share anything. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I can, I can understand somebody who was brought up in um, a non-Christian context of uh, a kind of um, theological exposure that berated Christ, I mean, that, that was not truthful. And the person did not know who Jesus uh, really was in terms of his, his messianic role in the life of man. And you ask him to accept Christ without sharing with him the beauty and loveliness and the salvation package. If that person has some hesitation, I can understand. But if you were brought up, let's say, in a Western culture, in, in this side of the world, where we have been gospel-saturated, and you know the powerful messianic work of Jesus, and you are told to give your life to Jesus, and you're making some excuses... To me, no excuse is valid for such a person because you only make an excuse to your detriment if you res refuse mm. to accept the salvation plan offered so freely and so beautifully by Jesus. Wonderful. I, I just want to go back to Pastor Enoch. You said you used the text, now, now is the day of salvation. But why now? Well, um, I, I, I mean, I can come up with some reasons. Um, one, we do not have our lives in our hands. Wonderful. You know, we, we, are, we have been given life by the Creator. And um, he inspired his writers, the Apostle Paul and others, to, to indicate when it comes to accepting him, it should be now. And um, you don't do it now, and you plan for next year, but next year, by mm. next year, you could be under the ground, mm. you know, and, and, and meaning <laughs> that you, you, you're gone. And we know we cannot, one cannot accept Christ when life has left them. True. No. So it means that you have to do it when, when life is there. If we knew for sure, Pastor Noel, hmm. that in 10 years' time I still have life, then, okay, if I have life, once there's life, there is hope, so then I, can, I don't have to do it now. But we don't know that for sure. We would like to be alive, but we don't know for sure, <laughs> you see? Wonderful. So, so, so therefore, I mean, just this, between the last two years, I mean, millions of persons have died. You know, I, I did a blessing in a house for a gentleman, you know, came from the U.S. and bought a house here. And then last month, his brother told me he's gone. And I was like, I reflected on that. I said, wow. You know, after working so hard and you mm -hmm. buy a property and thinking of relaxing and COVID just snatched you away, gone. Uh, yeah. So I'm just saying that we, we don't have our lives in our hands. So when the Bible says today, we shall hear his voice. Today, if you hear his voice, hard not your heart. Meaning, whenever, whenever that voice is heard by you, you shall accept Christ. How shall we escape? Mm -hmm. the, the, the Bible asks, if we reject such a great a salvation, how shall we escape? We can't escape because we should have accepted mm -hmm. at the appointed time. Mm -hmm. And the appointed time is always now, now. when it's presented to us. Wonderful. Pastor God, I see you want to see something. Yeah, I, I want to add, um, <coughs> excuse me, while Pastor Isaac was talking, I... I was touched with a little pity in my heart. Pity, why pity? For those persons who have been erroneously taught that there is such a thing as a second chance. Mm. I have heard mm. people telling me that during the seven years tribulation, they're going to have a second chance. I've heard other um, fates saying that um, during the thousand years, the devil is going to be bound and folks going to have a second chance. Mercy. Now, I must say, folks, that unfortunately, those two positions cannot be supported by the Bible. Sure. It is, there is no second chance. It's appointed unto man once to die. After that comes the judgment. The time to accept Jesus is now. Don't wait for any future event or any future opportunity. The opportunity or the opportune time is now. Wonderful. Always now. Wonderful. I hope our online viewers are paying critical attention to what was shared by Pastor Enoch and Pastor Gordon in relation to why one should not make the excuse 
uh, the excuses when it comes to salvation because life is very short. As a matter of fact, James says life is like a vapor. Today it is here, tomorrow it is no more. So whenever you have been impressed by the aid of the Holy Spirit, one should accept Jesus now or today. There is no tomorrow when it comes to salvation. At this moment, we would uh, take a break and we would look at one of our promotional video as we continue our program right here. Many persons are looking for the key to a meaningful life and they've discovered it's not liquor, it's not sex, it's not money, it's not fame, it's not fortune. Yes, the Bible has the answer. It is Jesus Christ who is the hope of the ages. Join me, Glenn O. Samuels, in the Footprints of Hope, Walking with Jesus, Evangelistic Series, Live and in Living Colors. See you. Many persons are looking for the key to a meaningful life and they've discovered it's not liquor, it's not sex, it's not money, it's not fame, it's not fortune. Yes, the Bible has the answer. It is Jesus Christ who is the hope of the ages. Join me, Glenn O. Samuels, in the Footprints of Hope, Walking with Jesus, Evangelistic Series, Live and in Living Colors. See you. tune with us this morning we've been having a wonderful time on the, the topic excuses and my two colleagues has been answering the questions very profoundly and we want to continue our program we want to also ask you you know to share your comments you know share your your your, your response and so on and once we see them or your question if there is time we would seek to answer them so we just want to thank you again for staying tuned and being really active in the chat. I'm seeing all the comments that have been sent. So we thank you. As we continue this morning, I want to ask my panelists a, a very profound question. There are some excuses that many people love to make when it comes, for, when it comes to not surrendering uh, their lives to Jesus. Uh, one of the questions or one of the excuses that will that normally been made by many people within our society is this one. I'm already a member of a church. How do you respond to an excuse like this? That's a very interesting question, Pastor, because it, it causes us to focus on the, the solemn truth that being a member of a church does not equate being a Christian mm -hmm. or being close to Jesus or having surrendered to Jesus. One of his most profound sermons on conversion preached by Jesus is recorded in John 3, where Jesus told a churchman, you must be born again. True. This was not just a churchman, but a high-ranking churchman. So the fact that you are in a church does not necessarily mean that you are in Christ. The church is a physical organization, but give, surrendering your life to Christ transcends that. It's about relationship. Mm -hmm. So you can have religion without relationship, but we want you to surrender to Jesus that you may have a living, vibrant, obedient, submissive relationship to the Lord. So, yes, you may be a member of a church, but the question is, have you surrendered to Jesus? Amen. Amen. Pastor, you know, do you have anything to share? Yes, Pastor Noel. Um, you, you know, that, as Pastor Gordon just said, um, being religious is, is something that... Um, you know, it's it's different from being spiritual, being connected. You know, Definitely. Um, you're following a set of dogma rules. You know, just 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 being religious. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there were a lot of people like that in Jesus' time, and mm -hmm. um, so much so that Jesus had to respond, and he said, "In vain do they worship me. Mm -hmm. There are many persons who are worshiping Jesus in vain. Um, they know what is correct to do, but it's just not convenient for them." Yeah. Sure. Yeah, they, they know it, that's the r right way of doing things. That's the that's the 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 the, the Bible way, the mm -hmm. Jesus way. But it's not convenient for them, and therefore, they they are not doing it. And they, they, they as you said, yeah, you, I meet many persons like that. I'm in a church pastor, but church is not it. Jesus said, not not everyone in Matthew seven twenty one. I think it is. He said, not everyone who say Lord Lord yeah. shall yeah. enter the kingdom. True. There are many people who say Lord. No, Jesus didn't say Pastor Noel. Not everyone who worshiped the devil. 
Mm. There are people who are saying Lord, uh, referring to Him, mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. and they're not going to the kingdom. Why is Jesus saying that? That looks that sounds hard. Mm. Jesus, are you telling me that that I'm a worshiper of You? I'm not worshiping Satan. I'm not going to the kingdom. Well, of course, that is being religious. That's what Jesus is saying. You just being religious. You 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 just exercising um, religious behavior, mm -hmm. but you're not following me. You're mm -hmm. not obeying my word. So just belonging to a church, a religious organization, being a good member of that. You could, it's like club, you know? People have a club and you pay your dues and things. There are people yeah. who treat church membership like that. They, they're just being good members of the church. But that good, being good members cannot save us. We have All to right. be in tune with the word of God. We have to be obedient to Jesus and whatever he requires of us. We have to do it. Have that, in that relationship with Jesus. Yeah, so, yeah. so just being a member of a church can't save you. And by the way, Pastor, any church, just being a member of the Seventh Adventist Church can't save you. Come on now. Yeah, so I'm not saying, well, if you're a member of the Seventh Adventist Church, you, you are being saved, but if you're a member of the Catholic Church, you are lost or Pentecostal. I'm not saying that. Just being a member of a church cannot save somebody. Wonderful, wonderful. You know? So that, that's important. Definitely, definitely. Very powerful, very powerfully put. And it's very important. He made a, he used a word, follow. Follow, you know, and is something that we as individuals, we need to understand that when it comes to spirituality, when it comes to Christianity, true authentic Christianity, one needs to follow Christ. You know, one needs to build their faith on what the word says and not what tradition says. So it's very important that we understand that. There's another excuse that many of us love to make, and that is, um, I am not good enough for Jesus. Persons love to use that, 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 that excuse, I am not good enough for Jesus. You know, I and I would ask, who is? Mm. Who is good enough for Jesus? True. And who is it that can make us good? So um, I have, uh, let's say, you know, hypothetically speaking, I have a heart murmur. I have some valves that are in my heart that are not working well. And uh, here comes a brilliant, well-lettered cardiologist and says, come. And I said, boy, I'm not good enough to come to you. you know, my heart not good. Mm. But that's the reason why you need to come to me. Exactly. Right? <laughs> so if you're not good enough, then the one who can make you good is Jesus. True. And he says, come, and I will make you good. So stop focusing on yourself and mm. focus on the invitation that the master gives. Because when you come, he will give transformation. Amen. Amen. How do you answer that question, Pastor? You know? Well, of course, I'm um, fully agreeing with Pastor God and what he's saying there because um, it's, uh, and I like to add, it's, it's a plan of the enemy, you see, <laughs> to make persons believe that, you know, this Jesus thing, you, you can't reach a standard. Mm -hmm. Don't fight up, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People always figure, you know, it's yeah. a big fight, true, you know, true. so you don't, have to, you don't have to fight up. Um, but the prophet Isaiah said, all we like sheep have gone astray. Powerful. Everybody has gone astray. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there isn't the one that has not gone astray. So when we say when someone says I'm not good for Jesus, well, as Pastor Gordon asked, well, who who is good? Mm. None. None is good. So we all need to come to Jesus. But the devil always makes us believe, a person's believe that. And and that's where people sometimes pass uh, commit suicide and all this stuff. You know, because True. the devil brings you to a point. Very low. You you feel low in your spirit as though life is hopeless. It, it doesn't it, it doesn't it doesn't worth it going on. It doesn't work as we like to say in a simple language, fighting up. So, you know, the enemy comes behind and whispers, mm -hmm. give it up. Give it up. You're not good enough. You're mm -hmm. trying. Um we talk about resolutions and you make resolutions and you fail. And you make resolutions and you fail. And you fail, and then the enemy tells you. Waste of time. Mm -hmm. You can't make yeah. it. Give up. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, so when Jesus is is being presented to you now, it, it's, it's it almost comes natural because you have been failing. So it's, it doesn't make sense. But that's why Jesus. That's why we need Jesus now, anyway, exactly. because we have been failing. Mm -hmm. And the only one to make us um, successful is the same Jesus. So the person who can make us successful is the same one whom the devil is trying to prevent us from going to. Exactly. Yes. Yeah? So I'm exactly. saying. All of these excuses, Pastor, um, those that were asked and those that we, you, will, you will ask, is the enemy trying to prevent us from, from enjoying what he knows. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you have this, you have this good uncle and someone telling you, well, I'm something else. But the person knows that 
the man is so liberal that if you get to know him, mm -hmm. he will bless you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? But but that family member is trying to prevent you from knowing that person. The devil is trying to prevent us from knowing G Jesus yeah, by making yeah. excuses for not going to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what I want to say about it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And for those persons who love to use that particular excuse that you are not good enough, the mere fact that Jesus came, you know, should give you assurance that even though you're not good enough because you have sinned, he still wants to save you. And if I may add, Pastor, Jesus says, I come not to call the righteous, mm -hmm. but sinners to repentance. Amen. Matthew 1, 21, the, the angel said of Mary, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. So the truth is, we need to come to Jesus because we're not never good enough, but Jesus is the one who will make the difference in changing our status. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful uh, response by Pastor Enoch and Pastor Gordon. As we continue, there is this other excuse that says, I, I am not so bad. Do I need to change? You know, I'm not so bad. <laughs> the operative word is so. I'm not so bad. Do I need to change? How do you respond to a person who makes that particular excuse? It sounds... It, it sounds satanic. <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's, it's like, you shall not surely die. And mm -hmm. you know, yeah, the devil yeah. always cop out some yeah. kind of, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you're going to die. You're not, so you're not focusing on die. You're thinking of surely. Okay, surely. But remember, surely is qualifying the fact that you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not so bad. Mm -hmm. You're not focusing on the, the bad, but you're focusing on the so. <laughs> you know, um, we, we all want to make ourselves look um, acceptable, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we sometimes want to make ourselves and compare ourselves with each other. So when I look at that other person, I say, well, yeah, it's true. I am not that, uh, I am not that worthless. I'm still good. <laughs> yeah, you know, I am, I, I, you know, I'm not a criminal. Mm -hmm. Police don't come looking for me, you know? So, so I can't be, so when you come to me and you, you 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 say to me, I need to accept Jesus, and that ha that ha you know that has happened to me, Pastor. Why don't you go to these people and them there, you know? Because these are the ones we categorize yeah, persons. These true. are the ones who need Jesus. They cause they are they are they are torment to society. I'm just I'm just I'm just cool, you know. I'm, I I don't give trouble. No police have to come after me. Mm -hmm. So we categorize our ourselves. We we create st um um status, you know various layers, strata in society. And um, so then I conclude, among all the stratas in society, I am not so bad. But the fact is that we are <laughs> all, we have all gone astray. Definitely. Yes. We, you know, if we do not change, we, we as in human beings, the, the 7.8 billion persons in the world, we, if we don't accept Jesus, we are all going to hell mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. So it's not about so bad. We are, we are all, we we. We have been we have been born estranged from Jesus. We need to come to Him. So yeah. we are all bad. <laughs> Put it that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, Pastor Gordon, I see like you want yeah, to say I'm, something. Yeah. When when you say I'm not so bad, you're you're entering degrees, you know, um, mm. and it degrees comes degrees come under comparison. You are not so bad because y you are speaking relatively. You are comparing yourself to some other thing, some other person. And you're saying, I am not so bad. Yeah, but yeah. the true standard is Jesus. And I again, if I think in terms of medicine, um, can you imagine one person has one boil on his skin? He's inflicted with um, microbacterium leprae. He has leprosy. And the other person has 10 boils. The other one has 100. But one only has one. I say, man, listen, man, I... I, I am <laughs> fine, man. I, I, I only have one boy. But mm -hmm. the truth is that you have leprosy. Exactly. The other one may have 10 or 100, but the fact that you have a boy, a leprous boy, mm -hmm. even though it's one, you are just as inflicted with leprosy as the other who has greater symptoms. So you need to find the only doctor who can cure your leprosy, and it's Dr. Jesus. He's the one who cures the leprosy of sin. So if you think in terms of behavior, you're not so bad. Oh, I don't gamble. I don't steal. I don't chase women. I'm the husband of one wife. Mm. But if you haven't mm. given your life to Jesus, you are still lost. Definitely. Definitely. So we have to be very careful, my online viewers, that we don't make that particular excuse that you are not so bad as the panelist has uh, highlighted. 
we all have sinned, you know. We all need a Savior, which is Jesus Christ. And, uh, and Pastor, before you, and, and for even for those of us who have already accepted Christ, hmm. that is also dangerous because sometimes we, we see ourselves, okay, we have accepted Christ, and some have fallen back. And what they're doing, I'm not doing that. But I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I place myself in a better situation than themselves, not realizing Mm. That sin is sin in the sight of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes, as Pastor God was saying, the, the degree is irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, the fact is that, yeah, the fact is that that I mean, we we in the COVID situation, you you COVID and you are fighting to breathe, or you are COVID and you have a headache. It's COVID. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I, yeah, it's, it's COVID. You know. <laughs> If someone may be wearing it better, but the fact is that so sin, sin, the 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 ultimate, um, you know, the the ultimate of of sin, where 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 you end up finally, is in hell. If sin, yeah. if, if you not, if you do not repent, if you're not covered by the blood of Jesus, that will be or that would be your portion. So we cannot take comfort in that. The degree for what that person is behaving, or that person, the degree to which that person is going, I, I, I don't get there. I'm not reaching there. Mm -hmm. There's no comfort in that. There should be no comfort. Yes? If you're on the wrong path, we should make amends to get on the right path and get with Jesus. Definitely. Only with Jesus there is safety. Amen. You know? Amen. Only Amen. with Jesus. Amen. In other words, yeah. online viewers, hey, listen, we need to understand not so bad to get into heaven. No, you can't <laughs> you can have this type of behavior and believe that you'll be going to heaven. Nah. The only person that are going to heaven is the persons who are living in a living relationship with Jesus consistently. And these persons have, by the grace of God, have been overcoming sin as they continue to connect themselves with Christ. There is this particular excuse that a lot of our members, as, well, not members, but people love to make, in, and that is, they are church members. They are church members who are not better than myself. And you, you, you guys started to, you know, respond to that, that, that excuse already in the previous excuse. But this one is saying, um, there are church members who are not that bad or not better than myself. How do you respond to persons who love to look at members and determine where they are? You know, Pastor, um, we sometimes speak metaphorically of the church as being a hospital. Mm. And if it's true, then it has inpatients and outpatients. Exactly. You know, the person who is already in church, even if they have behavioral issues, the point is that they are there and one particular sermon on one occasion um, may reach their hearts and they may straighten up. While the other person who is outside may, may not necessarily be in the position to hear that sermon that the person hears who is on the inside. So the point is, um, if you think that they are members whose lives are not better than yours, remember, the perfect example is Jesus. Right. And if the person still continues to stay on board, even though they're weak, there is a stronger possibility that the Holy Spirit may get a hold of them. While you are outside playing the fool, saying that the person is not better than you, the person may surrender to Jesus after Pastor Maxi preaches or Pastor Isaac preaches mm -hmm. and, and they, they are now better and you're still thinking that they are bad, they're not doing good and they're not better than you. The point is that when it comes to God's claim on your life, you don't look to the left or to the Come right. On now. You step, stand up, step out and follow the master. Definitely. Definitely. Pastor Enoch, I, I, as a matter of fact, you, you are touching in a sense there that when it comes to salvation, it's a personal thing. Absolutely. Uh, what, what do you see, Pastor Enoch? Yes, Ella, we, we, the Bible says in Second Corinthians 5.10 that we must all appear Definitely. <laughs> True. before the judgment seat of God. We have to appear for ourselves. You're not going to appear there. I am not going to appear there and say, well, Pastor, well, Jesus, mm. when I check myself and some of the members in, in your church, I rate myself better than them. No, no. That would be a no, that would be a no a non answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you see, because our standard is not others. Our standard is Jesus. True, the perfect example. True, you see, 
we, we like to look at others because we, there's something in us. We like to rate ourselves better than others. So we always look for someone. And if we do, we'll always find someone whom we think we are better than, you know, mm -hmm. naturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that allows us to be in a false comfort zone because oh. you f I find that there are persons who are better than, so I'm okay. But the Bible says we shall all appear for ourselves by ourselves. <laughs> Before the throne of God, Everybody. the judgment seat of God. Mm -hmm. And I have to give an account for the things done in my body, not what others do. Yeah. You see? So the idea of judging and watching others when I have to give an account for myself, it does it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't hold past and well. So um stating that, well, there are members in the church, and when mm -hmm. I look at them, I'm better than them. I'm not in church and I am better than them. Mm. You know, I can I can come to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. I am not in church, but I am better than them. Mm. Well, you may be a bet, you may be a moral person. You know, you yeah, don't have to go yeah. to church to be that. You you know, you don't you don't get the cops trouble. You know, you're not on drugs and all this stuff. Yeah, you don't have to go to church for that. And you could see yourself as a good moral person, but when you when we present ourselves to Jesus, <laughs> all our goodness fail, filthy. becomes filthy, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. So the the focus should be on Jesus. And not watching people in church. It's the enemy again, Pastor Noel. I like mm -hmm. to say that. Mm -hmm. For us to get to honest. The enemy always say, no, you're in a better position than that person. That person going to church every Saturday or every Sunday. You're better than them. What he's saying, don't make any further stride. Mm. You, you're in a better position already. Exactly. And they're going to church. Yeah. It's a trick of the enemy to give us a false sense of security. True, <laughs> true. It's a trick of the enemy, Pastor Isaac, to blind the people into think, into not seeing the true condition of their heart. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So when you look at yourself and see yourself as being better, when you look at yourself and see yourself as being better than another person, it means that you're not understanding the condition of your heart. And Jesus not just looks at outward behavior. The Bible tells us that Jesus evaluates us from the inside out. Definitely. So you might think behaviorally you're better than somebody else, but what is it that's going on in your heart? What which the Bible says is desperately wicked. So you've got to stop this comparison because anytime you compare yourselves among yourself and measure yourselves by yourself, you may come out feeling a little better than some. But when you compare it, as Pastor Isaac says, with Jesus, your life with Jesus, then you see and while you're better than the church member that you're looking at, you are far from the mark as far as Jesus is concerned. Wonderful, wonderful. Amen and amen. So we have, you know, covered a lot thus far this midday hour. I can tell you I've been truly blessed. I'm seeing the online viewers, especially one of the comments says, very dangerous to think you are not as bad as others. You are lukewarm. <laughs> Another one says, <laughs> not that, uh, not that, uh, I, well, I wanted to go up a little, you know, but um, we're going to come back to it. We're going to come back to it. But even now, we want to take a break, you know, we want to take a break and take another promotional video as we continue our program. Stay tuned. You're going to be blessed. <laughs>
Thank you so much for staying tuned with us today. I know that many of you have been blessed. I can see it in the chat. Many of you are sharing your comments, you know, answering the various questions, and we just want to thank you for responding so vividly and so lovely. I, at this moment, there was one comment that I wanted to make in relation to the topic that we are looking at today. It says, it is our carnal nature that makes us compare ourselves. That's why we need to be spiritually minded. Also, another person said, not so bad still does not make you good or better. <laughs> Must in Jesus. And so we just want to thank you so much, you know, for sharing your comments and your response and so on. And I want to continue looking at the various excuses that many people in our society normally makes when it comes to salvation. And there is this one which really speaks about our young people. It says, my friend don't want me to. My friend don't want me to. In other words, my friend doesn't want me to make that decision for Jesus. Hey, Pastor well, you said it relates to young people, but... <laughs> <laughs> he covers everybody. <laughs> I've, I've, I've had situations where people, uh, grown people, living together and, and that kind of stuff and making... Mm. I mean, it, it just shows you when people want to make... We talk about excuses. Mm -hmm. People make some excuses. And when you think of... When you sit down and think about it, it's really foolish, you know? Mercy. <laughs> because um, when you say, my friend... What, what does friend mean? What does friend connotes? A friend is one's good for you. Uh, you know, that's what it should be. A yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah, true. You know, not a friend in me. <laughs> a friend. Mm -hmm. So your, your friend should want the best for you. Yes? And accepting Christ, we have two powers in the world, good and evil. And if you're accepting Christ, you're accepting the, the power of good over your life. Mm -hmm. Yes? You, you want to change direction. Whatever that direc direction you're going, clearly it was not a godly direction. Now you want to walk with Christ. And a friend, someone who wants good for you, wouldn't want you to do that? Yeah, wonderful. You know? So we have to be careful. The, the, the Bible says in, in Psalms 1.1, 1, 1, um, just paraphrasing, we have to be careful in what council we are walking. He said, yeah. this is the man, you know, who walks in the, the counsel of God because the counsel of the ungodly is a dangerous counsel to yeah. be in the company of the ungodly. True, true. Yes. So if you want to accept Christ and your friends who are supposed to be looking out for your good doesn't want you to, then that counsel, that friendship, that body of friendship is not a friendship mm. to value because mm -hmm. that person doesn't want you to be saved. That person wants you to continue on the wrong path. And, and I'm saying, therefore, that cannot be, that cannot be considered as friends. You know, we, I guess we use the word loosely. Yeah, friends. Yeah, but yeah. friends has to be persons who want the best, best for you, want good for you. True. And I cannot see a friend trying to dissuade you mm -hmm. from walking the the street and our way. Praise the Lord. Wonderful, Pastor yeah. Gordon. Yeah, psychology has demonstrated to us the influence and power that friendships have on us. Friends can. Um, help to define us. In fact, research has shown that um, for the most part, friends tend to earn in the same income bracket. Um, friends naturally, in fact, one study done at um, a Massachusetts Institute of Technology shows that when two people are walking together, unknowingly, instinctively, they adjust their pace to each other. Mm -hmm. So if one was accustomed to walking at a little stronger stride, he, he, he unconsciously um, changes to accommodate the, the, um, the friend. Mm -hmm. So friendships have power. We know that. But here is the thing. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? If you get all the erudite friends, the rich friends, the, you know, whatever the nature of your friends, if you gain all of them and lose eternal life, what would that profit you? Hmm. Then Jesus says, um, if any man will come after me, let him deny yeah. himself, which includes his friendships, his attachments, his social groups. Let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. So if your friends don't want you to remember, if Jesus calls you, then he has a better place for you and a better relationship for you than any friend could give to you, especially when the friends are trying to dissuade you. So as Pastor Enoch said, 
any friendship that is pulling you south, pulling you down, mm -hmm. then you may need to reevaluate that friendship. Very true, very true. And so we want to encourage you, you know, adult, young people, hey, listen, if a friend is trying to distract you and is trying to prevent you from walking in the narrow path, as Pastor Gordon says, you need to reevaluate that. And one of the comments in the bottom said, yes, Pastor Isaac, a friend should have your best interests at heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so we want to move on to another excuse that people love to make. And one of it says, there is too much to give up for Jesus. That's a big one. That's a big one. Hey, too After much. Calvary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, After Calvary. I, I wonder if we, we sometimes consider what happened to Jesus at Calvary. You know, when the artists paint Jesus, when you see pictorial representations of his crucifixion, we see him with a little cloth around the pubic area. Mm. But ask um, the Roman hist historians, the Jewish historians, the Greek historians, they all tell us that criminals, those who were crucified, they naked. were crucified naked. Jesus. Right? Jesus was scourged twice in one night. Hmm. And those lashes, they, they had the pieces of bone and stick and stones in the ends. And so he was lacerated. Hmm. Now think of all of that. Think of all that Jesus has done for us. And if he has done all of that, left the glories of heaven to come to earth's ghetto hmm. in order to allow them to spit on him and to buffet him wow. and to crucify him and to humiliate him all for you. Then my question is, what is it so hard for you to give up for Jesus? Wonderful. I love, love how you put it, Pastor Enoch. You know, I see that you, you have a thought there as well. <laughs> yes, Pastor, because... Um, I think it, it comes down to convenience. You know, there are some persons who don't necessarily reject Jesus, but the convenience to follow him, what it requires. You know, Th there's this, you know, the biblical account where um, this guy came to Jesus and said, you know, I'll, I'll follow you. But, well, more than one of them, one of them said, you know, I just got married. Follow you, but I just got married. I'm a bride there. I follow you, but I just bought a farm. You know, I have some, I have some work to do there. I just bought a farm. <laughs> and what was the response of Jesus? Hey, you know, he who put his foot to the plow and turned back is not worthy. Because following Jesus takes some commitment. Following Jesus takes us from our comfort zone, what we are accustomed to. We have to give up some things, maybe friends, maybe a job opportunity. Following Jesus his sacrifice, like it took Jesus from heaven. Yeah. He, he, you know, think of it as Pastor Gordon said. Jesus was home, home, heaven, in his comfort with his father. And he had to give up his godness, divest himself, as it were, and come down to be humiliated. And he could, Jesus could have said, you see, Father, that's not convenient. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's not convenient. I have to give up my power in heaven to come down to die for the sinners. But he didn't say that. He came. So when it's my turn now to give up something, maybe a job opportunity, maybe some eating habits, I like to eat certain things, you know? Um, there are some persons who you have said to me, Pastor, you never eat pork yet? When that oil is to run down your cheeks? And I say, no, I, you know, I never eat it, so I don't know where the oil running down. But there are some persons, simple things, just eating a, a particular thing, they, they, they figured, I can't give that for Jesus. I love Jesus, but I can't give it for him. So, so but, we, we, but loving Jesus requires us, you know, um, to give up certain things. Yes. Following Jesus requires us that. Seek ye first, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added. I think sometimes some person figure it's too much for Jesus. A relationship. You know, I like this girl, I like this guy, and they don't want to go my way. So, I, you know, we put Jesus on hold for a relationship. But, Pastor Noel, all things that we put before Jesus will eventually lose it. <laughs> Everything that we put ahead of God, at some point in the future, will eventually lose it. So it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to try to put anything for Jesus. Put it, yes, it's difficult, it's hard, um, because we are accustomed to certain ways of, thing and, uh, of doing things. But 
but with G with the strength of Jesus and the power of Jesus, we, we when we choose him, we can be victorious. We can Amen. be victorious Amen. Christian lives. Amen. Yeah. Very powerful. Very powerful. When it comes to spirituality, there are some sacrifices. Or when it comes to salvation, there are some sacrifices that we have to make. But these sacrifices would not would not go, you know, just as something that you just give up. Whenever you make a sacrifice for God, it is a blessing, you know, because you return, the blessing will be returned in twofold. And the Bible says it is better to live for Jesus than to live for yourself. You will always be blessed when you decide to go all the way with Christ. So make the sacrifice, you know, my friend, make the sacrifice. Give up what you have to give up for Jesus, you know, because Jesus is the one that cares for you and he had given up everything for you. As we come down to a close, we want to look at this question or this excuse that people love to make. And it is one that, you know, I used to make it before. But now understanding that when I accept Christ, he makes it easier. The excuse say, the Christian life is just too hard. Um, Proverbs 13, 15 says, the way of the transgressor is hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and this is true. There are people who get pay on a Friday and by Monday morning they're broke. They gamble all. They, they just, they, you know, they, their lifestyle, the way of the transgressor is hard. And in contradistinction to that, the Bible says, Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So hmm. in real terms, if you compare the life of a sinner with the life of the person who is truly in Christ, the person who is in Christ has it easier. And then mm. think of it. When you say the, the way of the uh, Christ is hard, it's only hard, you know, because you have some desires and some agendas that you want to carry out True. that are in in that run counter to Jesus's will for you it's hard because man I have to give up um, my womanizing I, I have to give up what I like to do on a Saturday afternoon I have to give up when you find it hard it is because your agenda is clashing with God's agenda for you but when you truly come to Jesus what you realize is that the way of Jesus is easy and his burden is light. Mm. That's right, Pastor, and I, I, I would further add. I, I must say, though, again, the enemy makes makes it appear the, the way of the transgression glamorous. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't look hard, you know, from the outset. You know, it, it's always quoted in nice stuff. The, the, the enemy doesn't tell you that if you continue that, that road, you'll end up a junkie. He, if you continue that road, no, he doesn't tell you that. So it looks glamorous. Yes, and sometimes the Christian way looks strict, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, have to be, you have to be prim, you have to be proper, you have to too many rules and regulations. So it makes it laborious. Um, and But... Contrary, on the other side, it makes the, the, the road of destruction glamorous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, But the devil knows at the end of a glamour, you know, he's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, he's the ad advertisement for, for drinking alcohol, flashing women, skimpy dressed women and, and in front of, a, you know, very luxurious cars. They don't show you men in drain. Hmm. Um, they don't show you men beating their wives and ill-treating the children. So the way of the unjust is, looks glamorous. But the way of Christ is easy, truly easy. Praise there is, the Lord. Yeah, there Praise is the nothing, Lord. no temptation that has overtaken us that, that, that God would not give us the way of escape. Exactly. He will give us the way of escape. Definitely. I, I just want to take five seconds to say, Pastor, that is why I, I like when Christians uh, reflect the joy of the Lord and their countenances. Mm -hmm. yeah, some Christians are always sulky and sad and listen, man. The joy that Christ has put in our hearts, let it be seen in our relationships that the unbeliever may know that being the man in the dance hall can't have as much fun as Pastor um, Enoch Isaac or Pastor Maxine um, do in the pulpit or in, in the social. We have fun. Yeah. Christianity is not, a, is not a bit of boredom. True. It is nice. It's exhilarating. It's wonderful. It is soul satisfying. Experience it. Wonderful. And so... My online viewers, it is very important that we understand, as Pastor Gordon have rightly said, um, the way of the Lord is not that hard. You know, there will be challenges, there will be difficulties, but the Bible says when you go through all these things, you are not going through them by yourself. He promised to be there with you. 
So there is support, you know, when you join the Christian faith or when you decide to follow Jesus all the way, you're not by yourself. And so this morning, I, I, I just want to ask this question to wrap up our discussion. So in essence, based on our discussion, excuses are dangerous. Would you say, men of God? Absolutely. Very much so. Especially when they are, um, when they are baseless and foolish. And, and i just like to say, pardon me for being so blunt, but any excuse that you make when Jesus calls you is a foolish excuse because of what Jesus has in store for you. Hmm. Pastor Enoch? Of course, excuses, as we said, we, we are trying to, we, the statements we make to avoid situations and um, you know, deflect blame and, and that kind of thing. And people always, because we, we are carnal, we want to do our own thing. You see, deep within us, we want to do our own thing and our own timing. Yeah. Yeah. If we have, if we all have our way, we want to. Yeah. If we know that, you know, okay, serving Christ is right. Do all kinds of stuff, and maybe just at seventy-five, when strength is leading us, we just check Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Because we want to do our own thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sin looks very appealing. Mm -hmm. The enemy makes it that way, mm -hmm. so it it looks very attractive. But this Jesus way. You know, it makes it look, as I repeat myself, laborious. But um, so we make excuses. But I'm saying all those excuses are behind the, the who's behind it? The enemy is behind definitely, it. Definitely. He doesn't want us to enjoy what he has lost. <laughs> and we'll never get. And we'll never get. Yeah, exactly. So he doesn't want <laughs> us. We have to think. We, he doesn't want us to, so to, to, to gain it. So he brings all kinds of stuff in our way to accept Jesus. Or uh, even after we accept Jesus, when we still go in our own way, he, he presents stuff. To make us still go our own way. We have accepted Christ, but we still want to do our own stuff. And we, we create excuses for not doing the right thing. Yeah. But it's, it's demonic. Definitely. And Definitely. Some, some people say, Pastor Noel, I'm too young. Man, I have to enjoy life. I'm too young. Or, but, but Josiah was eight years old when he started to rule Israel. Definitely. There are lots of young people who have made tremendous contributions to in this world and in, in, the, in the community of faith. You are not too young when Jesus calls you. Neither are you too old. I was in a certain country and I met a man who fought with Fidel Castro in the, in the, in the revolution in the 60s. When I met him, he was in his 90s. When he heard the gospel, he said, he said Dios es bueno. Mm. And he gave his heart to God in his 90s. He was baptized mm. and served the Lord. Mm. So you're not too young. You're not too old. When Jesus calls you, accept a beautiful invitation. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And so today, gentlemen, it was a pleasure having you on this platform. It was a pleasure by you sharing all your comments and experience. And so our online viewers, we thank you f so much for your comments, you know, your response. We thank you for being active in the chat. And we just want to encourage all our online viewers, hey, please, by the grace of God, seek not to make an excuse or excuses when it comes to salvation. If the Bible says, if you hear his heart, harden not your, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart and accept Jesus now because the Bible also says today is the day of salvation. We also want to encourage you to continue to view our series that is currently taking place on all the various platform, uh, Footprints, of, uh, Footprints of Hope evangelistic series by Pastor Samuel. We want you to continue to join, continue to share it with your friend and your family, and be blessed. And so we thank you again for being here today and having a wonderful time with us. As we conclude our program, I will ask Pastor Enoch to give us the closing prayer. Let's pray, Father. We thank you for the time we spent here today. We thank you for discussing the excuses that we human beings make and feel so comfortable sometimes. But we have been reminded that those excuses, when it comes to accepting Christ, are from the enemy. And we should reject everything that comes from the enemy. We pray for all those who are listening and who will listen to this program. We will view it later. We pray, Lord, that um, each one of us will make um, choices now that will bring honor and glory to your name. And we would not seek to bring any excuse um, when it comes to accepting you. Thank you, Lord. Bless this program and continue to bless our audience, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 May God bless you, one and all.